Hello. I didn't uh, see you there. You, you know, you, you really, really uh, shouldn't be here. But since you are, I have something to show you. Wait, the master approaches. Come, come with me. Okay, that's probably enough of that. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to this little uh, drawing painting demo. I'm drawing and painting um, a portrait of the actor Boris Karloff as uh, Frankenstein's monster uh, from the 1931 um, film that was released by Universal Pictures uh, way back in the day. Um, Let's see, I'm just kind of starting, uh, obviously, the drawing process here and trying to find um, all the different shapes uh, and proportions that, uh, that make up this uh, kind of side view portrait of, of Boris Karloff here. I, I love these old uh, monster movies. I grew up watching them when I was about five or six. My folks would... Uh, let me uh, stay up on Saturday nights. Uh, they'd, they'd make me take a nap and wake me up. and I'd uh, get up and watch these old black and white movies on one of the channels that uh, our station had uh, these old movies playing on. And sometimes it would be something like Laurel and Hardy or a comedy, but a lot of times it was these old Universal monster movies. And that's where I kind of fell in love with uh, <laughs> these old movies. Um, and I tend to watch a few of them every every Halloween season. <laughs> so Frankenstein is probably one of my favorites of, of all of them. Here I'm just continuing to uh, work on uh, the portrait. Looks like I needed to fix the chin there a little bit. And as I'm, I'm looking at this uh, in retrospect, and, and of course um, while I was painting, um, I changed some things, but I'm I'm seeing proportion problems here that I, I catch later in the painting, and I'll I'll call those out a little bit later. You know, Frankenstein the character is actually 200 years old uh, this year. Uh, the original novel was published in 1818, if you can believe it, 200 years ago. So, so happy 200th birthday to uh, Frankenstein's monster and all that goes with that. 
Looks like I'm about done here, yep. So. Okay, so now I'm going to set up the lab here for uh, doing uh, the painting portion of this. Thank you, Frank. Okay, this is kind of an odd place to do this, but I'm going to show off my, my new little brass pallet from Brass Pallet India. I guess we can think of it as a little mini coffin <laughs> for the sake of, of going with this video. But this is a this little thing is built like a tank, and it, it opens twice there, as you can see. It holds 12 colors inside. Um, as I said, this is from uh, Brass Pallet India. It has a removable paint tray that holds 12 colors. And it has this little kind of like bar on the side there uh, that lets you hang it off the side of the palette, as I'm showing here. And so you can actually use that middle well. <laughs> See? <laughs> as, I'm so, as I'm showing you there, uh, you can use the middle section for mixing if you so choose. But in this video, I'm just using the using it as is. So I'm loving this little palette. It's, it's a nice... Great little pocket size. <laughs> Using a little acid and, and uh, embalming fluid uh, for uh, this one. Just kidding. Now the costume that Boris Karloff wore um, for filming Frankenstein was actually like 35 pounds. Um, it was a heavy costume and he'd have to kind of lean back on kind of a support board between takes sometimes to kind of help take the weight off. Um, each of his boots, I think, were about 11 pounds each, and they, they were weighed down so that he could lean forward unnaturally as he walked. I guess um, Karloff had some back problems. I mean, he was like 43. When they filmed Frankenstein, he was he had some back problems already, and I guess the heavy boots and some, some kind of braces in the costumes and, and things really made his back a lot worse. So here I am putting in kind of a background wash, and since I'm working from a black and white photo, um, I'm not going to, you know, I know I'm not, looks like I sped it up there a little bit for you. Um, I know I'm not going to be uh, probably doing a lot of vivid color in this one, but I wanted to do kind of a yellow to blue um, background wash because I knew a lot of the color in this was going to be kind of a lot of muted greens and things like that. So all the washes that I put on top of this uh, will go, you know, as they're going to be a lot of greens. Uh, for Karloff's makeup uh, for this Frankenstein movie, um, it took three and a half hours to uh, put on and two hours to remove. So it took a lot of time to get him made up and and uh, out of the, the makeup. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting in a dark along that side uh, of his face, of you know, the obviously the, the profile there. Uh, carving out that profile, um, I really want that line to be sharp. I'll get more loose as I go along, but I really want that line to be sharp. So that's why I'm carefully picking that out and kind of uh, working the background first and just kind of um, establishing um, that part of the portrait. Karloff actually starred in 
three different Frankenstein films. Um, he played the monster in the first one, just titled Frankenstein. Um, and then he played uh, the same monster character in The Bride of Frankenstein. And then he played um, the monster again in The Son of Frankenstein. Um, several other actors went on to play uh, Frankenstein's monster. Um, one of them was uh, the actor Bela Lugosi that played um, Dracula in the first uh, Universal Studios Dracula film. Um, and what's interesting is he was originally slated to play the monster in this first Frankenstein film. Uh, but they did some test footage with him, and he insisted on um, creating the, the look or, or having a huge hand in the look of the character. Um, and there was some test footage shot, but uh, from what I understand, it's lost. I'm going in here just on the painting real quick to uh, kind of fill in some of the mid-tones and kind of figure out where those sh shadow shapes are going to be. Anyway, so they shot some test footage with Bela Lugosi, and um, he just looked goofy, from what I understand. It, did, it wasn't scary. Um, so the director, uh, James Whale, uh, started looking for another, another actor to play the part, and he ended up um, running into uh, Boris Karloff um, and asked him to do it, and the rest is history. One of the fun things about the Frankenstein makeup um, is that um, Boris Karloff had some bridge work um, on the sides of his, you know, where his molars are or were, and uh, he could remove that, that bridge work, uh, like dentures, um, to help create the, the sunken cheek look of the, of the character. Okay, I dropped a little red into the background there, um, because why not, you know? <laughs> I It's just kind of there as kind of a counterpoint to all the uh, greens that are going to be um, in this. It was just kind of like a little, just a little afterthought there to drop that in. I think I dropped another drop of red in here somewhere just to kind of, just to kind of give a little contrast to the colors. I mean, they're not rich, vivid colors. Um, I'm using, but I wanted to still um, pull it away from being uh, quite so monochromatic. So I'm going in here and putting in some of the uh, dark shadows, dark shadow areas, um, trying to figure out some things. I, I forgot to mention, you notice, um, I realized that I drew the, the top of the head far too low. So what I did back there was um, establish a higher... Uh, top to his head um, so that when I go back and paint the darks in there I'll, I'll remember that it's it needs to be higher than I actually made it one interesting thing about the film um, is that it, to audiences it was really uh, kind of controversial and scary uh, the movie and um, in Kansas, they actually banned the film um, on the grounds that it showed cruelty and, uh, quote-unquote, uh, tended to debase morals. So, yeah, it was, it had kind of mixed a mixed uh, reception in terms of um, uh, how, how scary it was to people and, and whether people felt that uh, a film should be that scary. You know, it's interesting. It's, it's not scary to audiences today, necessarily, you know, but uh, back then it was a big deal. They even, um, they even filmed a kind of, uh, I'm going in with the dark filling, you know, fixing the chin there and, and putting those dark values in under the chin. Um, but they actually filmed a, like a, mo a little short monologue to put on the beginning of the film that kind of warned about how scary it was so people were prepared which I find kind of funny <laughs> okay I'm just kind of moving those darks around with clean water kind of um, on the chin there to kind of bring out some of those mid-tones
And this is meant to be kind of a sloppy, loose, kind of a little painting, uh, since it's something I'm doing quickly. One of the other interesting things about this film is that Karloff, um, Boris Karloff, was not billed. Uh, was not, there's a little more red to kind of uh, go with the red in the background. Um, the, his billing on the film uh, in the credits was just a big question mark. Um, he wasn't deemed as being, I think they wanted to, to have a little mystery there. Um, but, the, but they also kind of treated him as if he was sort of a prop in a way, um, which is crazy because his performance is brilliant uh, in this movie. Um, but uh, he wasn't even invited to the premiere. One kind of funny thing is that Karloff, you know, he was a very uh, distinguished Eng English gentleman who was uh, very well, well read, well spoken, but he referred to uh, Frankenstein's monster, the, the character that he played is dear old boy. So I found that kind of funny. Uh, later on, Karloff, uh, sorry, Boris Karloff actually uh, was the narrator and the voice of the Grinch um, in the old Dr. Seuss, uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas cartoon from the 60s. So when you hear that narrator talking about the story of here, I'm fixing under the chin there, um, when you hear that narrator in that old animated special, that's this guy, that's, that's Boris Karloff. Okay, I'm going in and I am adding some uh, clothing detail. Um, nothing too specific. Uh, it's just there to kind of um, suggest what's going on in that clothing. A little shadow under the nose there. Trying to find those mid-tones. Okay, I'm putting in kind of a sickly, kind of, kind of puke green uh, there to just sort of um, add some warmth to part of the face there so it's not quite so blue monochromatic just add a little little punch there now i'm using a lot of um Payne's gray in this one so i hope i hope i've left enough uh Payne's gray out there for the rest of you that like to use Payne's gray but i'm almost using it um like a like an ink at this point, like I'm inking in some of the darker areas, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. Another interesting uh, Frankenstein fact is that uh, all the uh, lab equipment, all the uh, lightning, <laughs> lightning effect producing equipment and all that stuff, all the lab stuff, um, from the first Frankenstein film was actually used again for uh, the Mel Brooks uh, kind of parody of the Frankenstein films, uh, Young Frankenstein, uh, which was released in 1974. It's another one of my favorite movies. I love that movie. Okay, I'm just kind of finding that hair texture there and where how it... Uh, how it works with the collar. Trying to put some darks in the hair without making it just a big black shape or a big dark shape. Uh, the, the type of water, I, I have a feeling somebody's going to ask, the type of watercolor that I loaded up this new little oh, here, uh, real quick, I apologize. it was going to cut off my video. So I lost about five or ten minutes here, so sorry about that. Anyway, like I was saying, the type of paint that I use in this palette is 
from Daniel Smith. Um, so now I'm pulling out the gouache, a little bit of white gouache, um, to kind of go and pull out some of those highlights uh, in the painting, kind of to finish it off. Um, typically, gouache. Um, typically I would uh, probably mask out uh, those with some liquid frisket, um, those areas, those bright white areas, or just be more careful. But um, uh, for the sake of this one, I'm going back in with some white gouache and um, pulling out those bright white highlights. And I'm also using it to um, kind of fix problems or errors on that, uh, on that bright side of his face. You'll see me fix things like the nose and the slope of the forehead, things like that. Now you can see me really fixing the tip of the nose there. There was a strong light um, hitting the actor uh, when they took this photo uh, coming from the left. So it's, it left a really strong kind of rim light on that side of his face. And I think that that bright white helps sell the realism um, a little bit in the painting here. Now there was also a light um, not quite as strong coming from the right side from behind his head. And you can see that... Um, so there's a little little light area under his ear there that um, where the light was catching his you know his jawline um, and then of course his ear and stuff back there. A little bit on the hair. Got to make sure his electrode is. <laughs> Is shiny. Well, that's it for this one, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for watching and, and hanging in there for this. Um, so take care. I'll uh, see you next time. Bye.